Hello. Ah, it's been a minute since I have gone live. There was one stage where I went live every single day for 30 days and I did that because I was absolutely terrified of going live and um, it worked. By the end of it, by the you know, eighth time, I was like, yeah, I can do this, no problem. By the tenth time, I was like, I don't even have anything to talk about, but it's okay, I got it. By the 15th, 15th time, I went, I would press go live without even having any idea at all what I was going to talk about, without even having the thought of what am I going to talk about? I don't know what I'm going to be talking about. And then by the 30th time, I went live, the 30th time in a row, I think I went live from the sauna once because I was so committed that I have to go, I have to do it every day. If I break the pattern within that 30 days and I, and I skip one day, then you know something terrible would happen. Um, no, it's more because, and it's actually because I. This is how I learned to commit to things and to create a new habit is to do it every single day, no matter what, for a certain amount of time, and then to let go of that commitment and then allow it to be part of become part of me, so I can do it when I want to do it, when I feel like I want to do it. Because when I'm afraid to do something, then of course I never feel like doing it. And I think, oh, I'm not good at going live or I don't feel like going live. So that kind of creeps back up on me when I haven't been live for a while. Um, and the reason I wanted to go live today was firstly, I moved into my new place, uh, which is pretty spectacular. Uh, I'll show you the, the view. It's a it's pretty special I feel so kind of beyond um, it's kind of hard to believe that this is where I live and this is the life that I had and the how I would never have been able to get here with a detailed strategy of how to get here it just wouldn't have been possible. It just happened through these strange events that led me here and following what I couldn't help but do, you know, following these deep desires and um, kind of doing what I said that I did with the lives, you know, being committed to it, what it was that I being committed to what it was that I held for myself in terms of my standards and walking into the uncertainty even when I was total, when I was afraid of it. And when I worked in finance, I studied finance because I was so afraid of not being secure and not being safe. And money was the one thing in my life, well, there was a few, but money was very obvious when I was a child and when I was growing up that that created an instability in, in, my, in my parents. And of course, that um, was on in on floor into myself. I was thinking last night I, as I was driving back from Chengu to Ubud, my petrol was running low, and it was pouring down with rain. And I also had someone meeting me um, to deliver a helmet, and I only had a certain amount of cash with me. And it was kind of this moment of: Do I get the petrol, or do I leave enough cash for the 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 guy who's delivering me something. And I thought, how ridiculous, you know, I can just go to the ATM and take money out. But it reminded me of this time when I was a teenager and I'd moved in with my dad and we were living in the country and he was working in Melbourne um, and I was pretty much living by myself um, when I finished high school, year 11 and year 12. And he would come back on the weekends and he had picked me up from a friend's place and it was, you know, he was essentially working, um, essentially most of them, all of his money was going to my school fees. You know, it was very, the, the decision was before I decided to go to this school was, um, am I gonna commit to it? Because my dad was making a huge amount of, he would make a huge sacrifice in order to send me to this school and that was to pay quite a lot of money. So I said, yes, I will commit myself and I decide that I'm going to be, I'm going to learn as much as I can because I want to give myself a future. I, 
my, and my dad gave me that opportunity and he held that vision for me which is kind of amazing because no one had really held that for me before I didn't even know I didn't even know that that was possible actually I if you've heard me talk before I I wanted to be, well I didn't know what I wanted to be, but I thought the only option was for me to be a hairdresser, and not that there's anything wrong with being a hairdresser, but it didn't come from desire. It came from because I saw that as my only option because I wasn't academic. And then my dad saw something different, and he said, well of course you can be academic, it's a choice, it's a decision, it's something that you work at, it's not something that you have or you don't have, it's something that you commit to. So anyway, I'm in the car with my dad and where, and he's picked me out from somewhere and he has a panel van because he was teaching at, um, at RMIT um, engineering and he used to be, I mean, my dad's he's so great with his hands. I think he was a plumber, he was a handyman, he, he can fix everything. So we had a panel van because at one stage he was um, a handyman or a plumber of some sort. And so we're driving in the car and uh, the car stops or it's it's just on it the engine's not running and we're just rolling and I say what what's going on with the car he says I don't have enough money for petrol so we have to roll the car home and I thought what we don't even have enough we don't have an, you don't have enough money to put petrol in the car and so he picked me up from my friend's house and we rolled the car home and um, that's just kind of how it was. Like, there were a lot of moments like this when I was growing up. And I definitely had, you know, I had a lot of love for my parents. Um, and they did everything that they could to support me. Like, my dad spent pretty much all of his wage to send me to private school. Um, but, yeah, there were these... There were moments like that, you know, my, my dad not having, not having enough money to buy petrol. And um, it was ironic, he picks me up from my friend's house, you know, and I go to a private school and most of my friends are very affluent. And uh, my life was just so different from that. But anyway, the, one of the reasons why I studied finance was firstly because of my dad, because he said to me, if you want to have an easier life, now is the time where you can set that up for yourself by studying, by getting a good mark, and by going to university. I mean, that was the only way, really, that they knew. My dad knew because he's not entrepreneurial. Um, and so I also believe that the only way was through academia. And when it came time to choose what I would study, I wasn't one of those people who just knew what they wanted to study. I, I always admire people like that, and I'm a little bit envious. I actually wanted to be a pilot. and. Um, but they didn't have HECS, which is uh, the government fee-paying system where the government pays and then you pay the, the government pays for your schooling and then you pay the government back slowly over time. They didn't have this to become a pilot. The option was to go and work for the Defence Force and um, I didn't like that idea because you essentially sign yourself off on an agreement for a certain amount of years and you're kind of owned by the de Defence Force. So be being a pilot was out. And um, I, I really loved art, but I was told there was no money being an artist or um, doing art. And so I thought, I don't want to do that because I want to be able to pay for petrol. <laughs> I don't want to have to struggle. I don't want to be arguing about money like I saw my mom and my dad do even when um, they were no longer together. And um, I really didn't know what to study. I thought, and I had options. Um, I thought maybe... Maybe I'd be an accountant, maybe lawyer. Uh, one of these jobs that seemed very secure and very stable in terms of the direction you go. And it was time for us to put in our um, it was time for us to put in our choices of what we would study. And we had got, all got given this huge book, and in this book was a list of all the courses that are available in Australia. And they had what the course name was, they had a summary of the course, and then they had these dollar signs next to the course. And those dollar signs signified how much money the average graduate earns after they finish this particular course. And of course, of course, of course, of course, me being having this idea that money was, is what would create safety and security in my life, 
I just looked at the dollar signs. I just went through this book and I circled all of the courses that had five dollar signs. And that was, the, that was the most amount of money that graduates earn after these courses. And one of these courses was economics and finance. And the other reason I liked it was because it was RMIT and that was in the city. And I wanted to move, I wanted to live near the city. I knew that. And so that's pretty much how I chose to study finance. And also because, you know, I wanted money. And then finance, I thought, great, now maybe I would understand it. If I understood it, then maybe I could make it. And if I made it, then I would be secure and safe. And then maybe if I would even be more than that. And I would be like my friend's parents you know, who have more than enough, who don't have to worry about how they're going to pay for petrol, who, you know, can go on family holidays or, or they buy takeout and it's not a big deal or, you know, they just do normal things without money being kind of a question that is then um, reiterated to the child of we don't have enough money for this. And that's what really drove me to learn about finance and learn about money. So I studied that for four years and then I got an internship as a, in a financial advisory firm. And um, I really loved my boss. We are best friends to this day, Sarah Regal Ho, who is her name. She's amazing, an amazing entrepreneur. And she's no longer in finance anymore. But uh, she was my first, my, my first boss and I hated the job, but I loved her. And I hated the job from the very beginning. I always, I never really enjoyed it, um, but I stayed in it because I have that commitment and I stay in whatever it is that I do and I see it all the way through. And I studied a CFP, which is a post-grad, and I knew so much about the strategy of finance, of helping very wealthy people manage their money, invest. Um, I worked with the CIOs of the big superannuation funds. I worked with the biggest fund managers in the world. I knew the deep strategy stuff, but I didn't know how to manage my own money. And I didn't know how to spend money in a way that felt safe. I was still terrified of not having enough. I was still, you know, when I'd go to a restaurant, I was earning six figures and I would go to a restaurant and I would decide what I was gonna order based on the price. And I would choose the things that are the cheapest. You know, I couldn't spend money freely. And I also had no idea how to make it other than having a job. So I learned all this information around finance and money that I couldn't really input myself. I thought it was only for rich people and that's essentially what I was taught, how to, how to manage rich people's monies, money and how to structure rich people's finances. And so that wasn't really that helpful for me. I mean, I did actively trade in the share market and I made some money then, but I didn't really know how to manage my cash flow. I didn't know how to invest for myself in a way that's simple and easy. I didn't know how to spend money. I didn't know how to bring more money in. I didn't know how to feel at ease with money. And eventually I decided I couldn't take it anymore being at work. I was 28 at the time. And I was at my desk and I thought to myself, I would really like cancer. Not enough so I die, but just, just to the stage where I don't have to work anymore. I mean, who thinks that? Somebody who is deeply, deeply wants to get out, but I had no idea how to get out. I had absolutely no idea. And you know, a little later than that, I, I decided to leave and go traveling, which opened up something new for me. And during that time, I realized I can't go back to being employed. I can't go back to working like that. And um, I was offered a job to have my own, um, my own, essentially my own advisory business. And that advisory business was to help millennials. And during that time, I actually learned the most I'd ever learn about money and how to manage money and how to manage it in a practical way for people who were accumulators, for people who were earning a salary and they wanted to invest in a simple way, who wanted to be able to manage their cash flow so they weren't freaking out about, oh no, I have this bill, I have that bill, or I want to go on holiday, so they, everything was sorted. And I learned all this. You know, for the first time, I'd been in finance now for, I've been working in finance for eight years. And um, this was the first time I actually understood 
how to manage it in a practical way. But I still didn't know how to spend it. And I still didn't know how to bring more of it in. And I was still always felt very, very unsafe around money that I, I never real I never had enough. Then I hired a business coach who I thought was a business coach, and she was, but she was actually a, more of a mindset coach, a money mindset coach. Her name is um, Malene Lee, and she's incredible. She now, she doesn't do that anymore. Um, she now works with women who were giving birth. But um, she did this for a long time, I think seven years, and she taught me so much. She taught me how to spend money. She taught me, your, she said this, your problem isn't that you spend too much, it's that you don't earn enough. And I will always remember this. I'm so thankful that she said that because she reminded me of actually, you don't need to tighten up. You just, you need to, we could get to expand. And from then I learned how to open different portholes for money. I learned how to spend money. I manage my own money the way that I teach other people to manage money. And I realize that it's not, the information is one part of it. You know, I have programs like Invest Like a Queen, which teaches you the information. It teaches you how to invest in a simple way. That is one part of it, and that will get you to a basic level of financial security and financial safety. But if you really want to get to the place where you feel you have deep trust of money, that it comes to you, that you know how to open portholes for money, that you know how to spend money, this is all mindset. This is above information. This is... This is an integration, this is an energetic calibration or a knowing of something greater than yourself, a knowing of something bigger than what you can see. It's not logical. So the information, you know, I, I did a masterclass a few days ago and I said, information puts you at like level two of wealth. You know, you know how to manage it. Um, you know how to do cash flow. You know how to invest it. You have estate planning set up. You have your documents in place. You have, you know about insurances. You have all of this. But level three is when you're really able to thrive. And that's when you have your mind and your heart calibrated to abundance, where you start to know and you start to learn how to be industrious. You learn how to be how to be a magnet for opportunities, how you, you learn how to be resourceful. And I say learning because it's something that I learn. It's not something that I ever had, you know, and I didn't, my parents didn't have this, no one, I didn't grow up with this. I was literally taught it from my business coach and then I implemented it. And, and there were a lot of times, it's now been four years since I worked with her. And there was a lot of times where I thought this shit doesn't work. You know, mindset does not work. Where is the money? This is, I feel super run safe right now, but it always comes through. You know, it's, and then my, my faith muscle gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And I am so sure now that I'm always taken care of. I'm, I'm so sure that I can always bring in money. I'm so sure that I will always be taken care of. My partner often says to me, you know, that I have this uncanny ability to bring in what I, whatever I say that I want and it just comes to me. And I said to him, yeah, it's not because I'm lucky, it is because I trained myself to be that way. I, I trained, it's, it's a muscle, it's like going to the gym. And at the start, it was really hard. It's like, if you, um, if you want to squat, you know, I weigh 50 kilos, if I wanted to squat 60 kilos and I go straight into the gym, that's going to be really, really, really hard. But if I go every day to the gym, you know, take rests and I do it over a few months, that 60 kilos, I can then lift pretty easily, you know, and I can squat it and it becomes easier. And that is the same with the ability to feel safe with money and know how to bring it in because if you are if you are in a state even if you have a lot of money even if you earn a great income but if you kind of always feel unsafe with it no amount of money or numbers in the bank is going to help with that feeling it's you have to learn how to trust yourself and how to be resourceful and how to 
spend money in a way that's conscious, in a way that you have gratitude when you spend it, when you pay your bills. To, be, to not think about it as it going out, but instead as it coming in. So when you pay your rent or electricity bill, instead of it feeling like that's money out, it's actually, you feel it as an investment. You feel like that is supporting you to actually bring in more. But you have to work, you have to do the inner work. You need the strategy, you need to have the financial education and the knowledge which I feel so grateful that I had the opportunity to learn this in a way that most people don't and most people never will because we're not taught this stuff. You know, maybe our parents teach us some of it, but they often have pretty poor um, financial, uh, financial education or, or financial know-how as well. You know, they have their ideas about what's worked for them and it's kind of black and white and not really a bigger picture because it's so emotional. People get so emotional about money and they think, yeah, this is the right way. This is how you do it. Um, but to actually know the facts and the figures and how to make it work for you in a, and to be unemotional about it, you know, that takes education. That takes information. Um, then that takes actually implementing that and setting up automations and putting it in place. And that gets you that safety. And that's great if that's where you want to be. Most people are not even there. And then the next level is where you're able to go beyond that and have all of that in place, of course, but then that's how you actually bring in huge amounts of wealth. It's not, you should never be bringing, think about bringing in wealth from investing. That investing is, and the word investing itself means guaranteed. And the only way to guarantee your investments is to invest long term on the side of averages that are on your side. And the way that I teach, you have 99% guaranteed return if you invest the way that I teach it, but it's long term. It doesn't get you rich quick, it's slow, but it works. And I would rather do that way and have that security and safety and then learn how to open up portholes for income, learn how to increase my salary if you're employed, um, learn how to open up doors for money to effortlessly come in to get rich quick. And you can get rich quick by doing that, but it's, my, it's, it's all internal work. And a lot of people, not everybody is willing to do it because both of these things, they take time, they take energy, they take effort, they take a total shift in your paradigm. So that's all I wanted to say today. I'm gonna to speak a little bit about a School of Money if you wanna stay on. Um, school of Money is launching on the 7th of November. This is my, um, my flagship program. This builds in everything information-based in terms of money, strategy, cash flow, investment, even the things you didn't even know that existed about money, but it's nothing, I don't put anything in there that is not necessary. It's everything that I used to do when I worked as a financial advisor and I would do plans for people that cost $10,000 by the way to do this plan and then manage their money. So I put absolutely everything in there and together we create a personalized roadmap for yourself and you're educated along the way. So it's not, now you don't need to go to anyone else to help you and things change. You, you know this information is inside of you. So we do that together and then we also do the level three stuff. And that is where we reprogram so you can start to see money in a different way. So you can start to feel that you were always supported financially that it's always safe for you to spend, that you start to know how to bring in more money, how to open more portholes for money, so you can feel beyond safe, so you can start to thrive. Because you need, if you really, if, if you really want to live an extraordinary life, money, of course it's not everything, but so many people are distracted by it. And they do things for money and they make sacrifices for money. You know, like my parents, they made so many sacrifices for money so they could support me. But they didn't, they weren't doing what they were actually, what they actually wanted to be doing. And I don't want that for people. I want people to be able to 
I want people to be able to bring their mastery into this world and not be distracted by money. And to, in order to do that, you need to have the safety, have the security, know how to manage it so you don't have to be chasing it all the time and know how to open portholes to allow it to come in in a way that is aligned to you so you're not selling your soul. And, you know, I, many men take my programs, but really my, uh, my, the, the people that I'm really interested in helping is women because my mom brought me up as a, until I moved in with my dad, year 10, year 10, 11, 12, but my mom essentially brought me up um, from the beginning. Uh, we lived in a share house, she worked two jobs, and I saw how difficult it was. And women tend to be less financially empowered, they have less investments, um, they're more risk adverse, so it means that they often take less, they, the light's shining in here. You turn it around. Um, maybe here. Um, the light's super strange now. Uh, yeah, they take a lot less risk, and which is can be great. Actually, women tend to be better investors than men when they do invest because of that, because they are more risk adverse and they're more thoughtful. They tend to be more thoughtful when they make investment decisions. But that is when they invest. And the amount of women investing is a very, very low compared to men. And the amount of money women have and assets women have, much lower than men. The amount of income women earn, much lower than men. I mean, that is not my story and I don't want that to be any woman's story. So that's particularly the people that I, that I want to support and um, why I'm doing what I do. So, School of Money starts on the 7th of November. It's $3,333, and we work together. It's around four months, and you have it for life. Um, there is two sessions per week, one on the strategy, one on the money mindset, and as we go through this process, you will be, doing, you will be creating your own personalized financial roadmap. So, I'm gonna drop the link in the comments and above. If you're interested, you can send me a message as well. Um, and yeah, okay, that's it. See you guys.